G'day guys, Ron here from Osborne Digital Marketing. Today I'm going to show you how to create your own PBN network. I'll walk you through everything from start to finish. So let's do it. Now, before you start your own PBN network, you need to consider why you're actually doing it. Is it to help you rank a client site? Is it to help you rank your own sites? Is it to help, I don't know, sell links even? Do you want to sell links? Whatever it may be, whatever you're trying to create your own PBN network for, you need to consider why you're doing it. So if you're going to set up something that helps to rank a client site, you need to set up a solid PBN network. If you're just trying to sell links, you need something that's already a little bit more powerful that you don't need to buy links for to then on sell said links from your PBN. So it's very important that you consider the why. Now for me, for PBNs, what I utilize them for is essentially like little micro sites, I guess you would say, to help boost up my clients or my main money site that we're trying to rank for a specific keyword, but I also use them for essentially lead gen so they can get the phone ringing a little bit more. That's how I use my PBNs. That's what I do. So with my own PBN network, that's how I approach it. Now I'm going to show you a couple of ways how I approach the PBN, like developing your own PBN network, but ultimately I use expired domains. So you have a couple of ways of sussing out your own uh, expired domains. Now there's two things if you're creating your own PBN network. You can use like an EMD, so an exact match domain, uh, lawn, mow, lawn mowing care Melbourne, you know, dot com dot au if you're in Australia, dot com if you're in Melbourne, Florida. So it just depends. You can go that approach, however, you're using a fresh domain, something Google's never seen before. So you're going to have a harder time to rank that. However, if you grab an expired domain, it's a lot quicker. There's that little bit more trust. And if you look for a domain that already has links coming into it, well, you've just saved yourself some time and dollars there. So that's another thing to consider. Now, the tools you can use to try and find expired domains are things like Spamzilla. You can also use expireddomains.net. So this bad boy right here, so this thing right here, expireddomains.net, and that's free. This thing you have to pay for. A couple of things I would say though, Spamzilla doesn't pick up everything like expireddomains.net. Honestly, I'll only use Spamzilla if I'm going after something that's quite big. So let's say it was something in the real estate game or anything around there. I know that there's going to be expired domains with a lot of power in there that I can get for quite cheap. But if I'm trying to look for something a little bit more unique, I find it's harder to locate that on Spamzilla than it is on the expireddomains.net. And it's free, like you gotta pay, I think it's like 30 bucks or whatever it is for a Spamzilla. But I just use it, it makes my life that little bit easier, guys, that little bit easier. So I'm okay paying that 30 bucks. But if you're not, just use expireddomains.net. Now you can also use GoDaddy auctions. So that's another great place. And it does help you if you buy a domain that hasn't dropped. So basically it hasn't gone expired, sat there with nothing on it for a couple of years and then been picked back up. If it's stayed in the SERP for many, many years and it's always been live and active, that's a lot better. But that comes with a price. Generally, you can get this stuff, like you can see here, make an offer, $116 for Mac 360 here. You know, is it worth $116? Maybe. You got the one down here, you can get it for 12 bucks. All right. Now, the thing is when it comes to picking domains for your PBN network is just, it has to align with the service and the purpose that you're setting it up to do. So again, with me, I don't really care about a Mac 360 unless I was trying to help a computer repair shop, something like that rank. And the main things that I look for is the categories of links that are coming through. So this is obviously the majestic, uh, the majestic categories. So you can just hover over this and it's gonna tell you what it is. So arts, this is gonna be business and management, business and consumer goods, services. This would be business. Uh, what's this one? References to libraries, you know, all this type of stuff. Red's normally normal. Red is computers and internet, web design. 
So there you go. You can sort of ascertain. If you're creating a link, again, a PBN for something along the lines of the mower example, the gardener example, well, you don't really want to have the domain with a lot of links coming in with a category being computers and web design and development. So think about that. It's very important. That's what I look at predominantly is the ratings from Majestic. Now, you just want to make sure that whatever you do, you do it as cheap as possible, okay? Because you might buy a domain and it might go nowhere. You might only ever be able to get the homepage index and that's it. Like it won't go further than that. So ensure that when you are building out your own PBN network, you don't spend too much. Don't over leverage yourself. Just drop a little bit of money on it because it might fail. That's the honest truth of building a PBN network is it might fail. So don't exert your funds too much. So that's the first thing that you want to do. Now from there, if you were to grab a domain, let's just say we want to go, no, let's go up to the $12 one because that's reasonable. I'd, I'd spend 12 bucks. Like you got to register the domain anyway. Now, same as always, guys, you're throwing it into, you're throwing it into SEMrush, you're having a look at it. Now, I do have a detailed video of how to review a PBN if SEMrush ever wants to work for us. But what you can do is go through and have a look at all the main stuff. But I'll show you a tip and trick that I look at, and I hope that this uh, has it. Now, you might need all time. So depending upon your plan on SEMrush, um, will determine how far back you can go. Okay. So now you can see these keywords, right? Now this is like six years ago, seven years ago, like 2015, 14, long time. But what you can do is you can click on this in SEMrush. Now, for some reason, SEMrush is taking its sweet time. But what's going to happen is it'll load in the keywords. So you, whilst you can look at the backlink profile, you can actually look at the keywords too. And I find that more powerful because you know what this domain was talking about then if there's screenshots from the SERP from this tool. So normally what will happen is, there we go, it's just awfully slow to load. I cannot get this thing, come on. Come on. Sorry guys, this is just not working for me. So like every time it moves, it just, there we go. Come on, this should work now. So this should pull in all the data here. And ultimately you can look at the keywords, even if it doesn't, oh, there you go. There we go. So sco scooter boosters, all of this type of stuff. So if this, let's say you're trying to rank again, a lawn mowing thing, do you want to talk about scooters and boosting scooters and all of this? Why is that keyword pulled in? Because remember, it'll most likely be the homepage or something like that that's been pulled in. So immediately, you know, ah, this website's not for me. So you don't even need, I personally, if I see things that aren't relevant, keywords that are ranking that aren't relevant, uh, I'm done. I move on. Now you can jump straight into the backlink profile. Absolutely. But the thing is with a PBN, just FYI, you'll have backlinks. You will sit there and go, oh, there's these backlinks. But then you'll activate the PBN. And then all of a sudden, these new backlinks start coming in. You'll be like, wait a minute. I bought this. This didn't have this trash. And all of a sudden, it just starts picking up all of these bad domains. And you're like, I thought I got a good one. That's kind of why I like double checking with the keywords and the Wayback Machine. So before you purchase the domain, you'd want to have a look at the Wayback Machine. So you want to throw this bad boy into here as well and check what you have. So... You want to make sure that the site is, again, nothing spammy and it's aligned with the purpose of your PBN network. So you throw it in the browser history. I'm just going to close down SEMrush, guys, because for some reason this is running awfully slow. But what the way back does is it you know, grabs a snippet of data. Now, you can see this and try and always make it like as close as possible. So that's normally a 301. Green, I think, is a three, like a 301, 302, anything along those lines. Uh, but the blue is normally a snapshot of something. But generally, like you can see these little lines indicate when when the snapshot was taken. That's 302'd, so that didn't work. So what you can do is you can come way back. If we, we go to 14, I think, when I was looking for the keyword. 
so you can open this bad boy up i have no idea why my computer is running so slow so slow so you can have a look no that's not good scooter accessories yeah here we go okay what is this like a french european website yeah there we go so you can actually see how the website looked definitely something that you need to do before purchasing the domain because if you purchase trash you're going to get trash so just remember that because what you can do and i'll show you this in a little bit when i talk about the hosting of your pbn is set it up exactly how it was okay so that's the first thing you want to do you want to have a look at it all check it all off and again i've got the video more so looking in depth at what you need to look at analyze backlinks do all that that's in another video guys i've made one of them before go and check that out now when it comes to hosting a pbn let's say you're like yeah i'm selling these scooters this is exactly what i'm doing i need this french uh website this this is perfect this is what i need i'm setting up this pbn no worries well what do you do from there well you're going to need hosting now a couple of things when it comes to pbns you need to make sure that they're worthwhile doing don't set up a pbn if it's not going to make you money that's the biggest thing that i can say now there are a lot of uh networks out there like chrissy has put me onto easy blog networks I'm trying them out now i haven't tried them before let's see how they go these guys i've used for a while happy with them pretty happy with them i would like the ability to move the uh have the c panel on that um around but yeah i'm i'm happy with how these guys are i like it i think they're pretty reasonable they do everything you need but the biggest thing that i love is you can actually import stuff from the way back machine so let's just say you're a little bit time poor like myself you want to be able to bring in the old design so let's say you really like this design and <laughs> you wanted to use this design import it so with these guys with let me close all this down but with these guys right here you can do that so you can actually import it all that way so i, I do recommend it's pbn.hosting i i recommend them personally so far everything i've seen has been pretty good the only problem is if you want to change from a html so when you import anything from the way back, so if you're trying to import your PBN uh, network, let's say, like set this up as from the way back, if you're then to go, I oh, want to set it up as a WordPress, you have to delete it and then re-add it. And that's a pain. Like to me, that's, I don't want that. It should maybe a reset button or something like that. But to be honest, it's five minutes. So if you were like, well, I don't have the time to set up a full-blown website right now, you can set up the way back one then come back in and delete it. That's the only problem that I have right now, but no one else does that anyway. So these guys, pretty good. And they're cheap. It's like three bucks or $2, whatever it is for uh, hosting. I, I like it. I recommend it. Now, when you're hosting a PBN, you can use all different variants and whatever you want to use. You could use WP, WPX for a uh, PBN if you want. But what I would suggest is trying to do it as cheap as possible. Trying to do it as cheap as possible is the name of the game when it comes to this stuff. Because you think about it, the domain's going to cost you, let's say, 15 bucks for the year. And then this is going to cost you, let's say, $2 a month. So as long as you get a couple of leads from your PBN a year, then it's paid for itself. It's okay. And as long as it's helping your client, what I do, help push things up. So money sites and that actually up my tier ones then it's working for me now if it's not working for you get rid of it don't hang on to it don't flog a dead horse it's honestly not worth it so that's what i would specifically focus on now i have jotted down a couple of tips before i forget them pbn tips and tricks footprints do they matter that's a hard one to be completely honest for me my opinion is yes and no I think I think it does matter a little bit, but at the same time, I think if you're using the same email for the WP, uh, like to set up WordPress profiles and all of that, I think there is a little bit of a profile there. Do I like keeping things separate? Yes, but I will also even set up a PBN 
if it starts making me money, I try to set it up as a real business. That's the truth of it for me, because I think it's a lot easier to actually go down that path if you have the phone ringing and that thing's working out, well, why not set it up? Why not set it up properly? Because if you look at your cost analysis, if you lose that bad boy, Google can't take it away from you if it's a real business. If they have any disputes, hey, here's my accreditation for the real business, mate. Try and take it away from me. So I treat PBNs like that. If they start making me money, I don't sit there and still risk them. I'll bring them on and try and make them a real asset. That's how I approach PBNs. Footprints and everything aside, again, you can use things like your CDN. So use a CDN and that can spread across the IPs. These guys do a pretty good job at giving you different IPs, everything like that. But I have noticed that sometimes there's been a couple of websites that have been <laughs> On, honestly, on the same IP. And I don't really like that. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. Uh, but apparently Easy Blogs is a lot better. They don't do that. They will not allow any contamination or anything like that from anywhere else. So like I said, I haven't tried them, so I can't recommend them, but I'll give them a crack for a couple of weeks and, and then we'll know. But you want to make sure that people have the ability to contact you on a PBN as well. So setting up Certain types of emails, again, will be problematic for you. One of my videos, I give away a straightforward tip, the easiest way to discover if it's a PBN or not, is there an email? If there's no email, then it's not a real business and Google won't classify it as a real business. Do you need a phone number for your PBN? The way I use my PBNs, every single PBN I have has its own phone number. Looks like a real business. That's the way I set up my private blog network. Now, again, you might be doing it differently. It might be for the purpose of selling links, you know, your $10, $15 links. You just might want to mass content it. So be it. If that's what you want to do, that's what you want to do. But I think if you're going to that effort, then you probably still should purchase some type of cheap number of, you know, Twilio, CallRail, whatever it may be, and just slap that up on the site. Because in the eyes of Google, if they see a phone number and an email, that creates so much more trust than the average website that doesn't have it. Those two factors alone can help you immensely. So your links will become that little bit more valuable if you do actually bring in a lot of traffic to your site. Now you should basically know how to set up your own PBN network. I'm creating smaller videos, otherwise I'll just get too long, that will actually explain each component. So when I'm looking for an expired domain, I will walk through an exact example of everything that I look for coming up in the next couple of weeks. So it's going to be broken apart. So over the next month, there's going to be a lot more PBN stuff coming out and I hope you enjoy it. Cheers, guys.